Hi everyone, last episode we just got this editor window popping up, so what I'd like to do now is get the gradient texture drawn in here. So let's go to the gradient editor script, and in here we're going to need a reference to the current gradient. So I'll make a custom gradient variable here called just gradient, and then I'm also going to make a public method for setting the gradient. So this will take in custom gradient, and we can just say this dot gradient is equal to the supplied gradient. Okay, so in the gradient drawer, where we're getting the window, we can hold a reference to that window just by saying gradient editor, I'll call this window, is equal to the result of the get window method. And then we can say window dot set gradient and pass in the gradient object. All right, so let's save that, go back to the gradient editor, and in here, to begin drawing on the window, we're going to need a onGUI method. And I want to first of all define the rectangle that we'll use for drawing the gradient texture. So I'll create a rectangle, call this maybe gradient preview rect, is equal to a new rectangle. And this is relative to the top left corner of our editor window, so 0, 0 would be starting at the top left, but I don't want it to be right up against the corner, I want to have some sort of uh, border. So let me quickly define a constant int, call this border size, I can set that to maybe 10, and I'll use this here, border size, comma border size. Then for the width, we can use position.width, so position just holds the position and size of our window, and I want to subtract from this border size multiplied by 2, and then we can just pick some height, uh, so I'll go with say 25, and now that we've got this rectangle we can simply say GUI dot draw texture, and pass in the gradient preview rectangle, and for the texture itself we'll go gradient dot get texture, and we'll pass in the width of our preview rectangle, but cast to an integer like so. All right, let's save that, go into Unity, and once this finishes compiling, I'll click over here, and we can see our gradient texture showing up. All right, now if we want to be able to start adding in new colors to the gradient, we're going to need to do a little bit more work on the custom gradient script, so let's head over there. I'm going to start by creating a public struct called a color key, and each color key needs to know two things. It needs to know its color, of course, and it needs to know its time. And so time, I'm just using in the same sense that we use it up here, where zero is the start of the gradient, and one is the end of the gradient. Now, I want this color key struct to be serialized, so let's add the system.serializable attribute. And I want these two private variables to be serialized as well, so we can add the serialize field attribute to both of these. Okay, now I want other classes to be able to get but not set the values of these two variables, so ideally I'd like to make these public and read-only, but unfortunately Unity doesn't serialize read-only variables, and another thing that uh, we might think to do is to use automatic properties so here we could say get and private set, and that would be pretty good as well. But it runs into the same problem. Unity doesn't serialize these auto properties, and so we'd find that the uh, value of this variable keeps getting lost in the editor. Uh, instead, we'll just have to write out separate properties for both of these. So I'll create a public color property, first of all, just called color with a capital C and I'll have a get block where it returns the value of the color variable, but of course no set block. All right, and then I'll just do the same thing for time. So public float time, get, and this returns the time variable. Okay, we also need a constructor to initialize these two variables. So I'll just press command I and just generate a constructor for those two, like so. Okay, the custom gradient is going to want a list of color keys, 
So uh, let's create a list of type color key. I'll just call this keys and I'll set it straight away to a new list of color keys. And we want this to be serialized, so I'll use the serialize field attribute here as well. All right, now the gradient editor needs to be able to get keys from this private keys list so that it can display controls for them. So uh, let's create a public method returning a color key. And I'll just call this get key. And it takes in an int i for the index of the key that we want to fetch. This will simply return keys with an index of i. Then we also need to know how many keys are in the keys list. So I'll just make a public int num keys. And this will just return keys.count. We then also need to be able to add new keys. So let's create a public method, add key. This can just take in a color and a time. And we'll start by constructing a new color key object. So I'll just call this the new key. Set it equal to a new key, passing in the supplied color and time. Now we want the keys list to be sorted based on the time of each of the keys. So the keys with a lower time should be at the start of the list. So we're not just going to add this new key onto the end of the list, but rather we're going to uh, loop through all of the keys currently in the list. So for and i equals zero, i less than keys.count. We'll say if the new key has a time lower than the time of the key that we're currently looking at, then we can just insert the new key into the list at that index. So keys.insert index of i and pass in the new key. And at that point, we can just return to exit the method. Now, of course, if the new key has a time that is greater than the times of all of the other keys in the list, then this will never run. So at the end, we're just going to add the key on to the end of the list. Okay, let's now get to work on the evaluate method. So I'm going to start off just by saying that if there are no keys in the keys list, so if keys.count is equal to zero, then I'm just going to return color.white as a sort of default. But otherwise, we want to start by figuring out which two keys this time value lies between. So I'm going to create a color key variable called key left. And by default, I'll just assign this to the first key in the keys list. And I'll also create a color key key right. And by default, I'll set that to the last key in the keys list. Now we're going to have a loop from i equals zero to i less than keys dot count minus one. And the reason for the minus one is just that uh, at each iteration, we're going to be looking ahead one key. So in here, I'll say if keys with an index of i has a time that is less than or equal to the supplied time and keys with an index of i plus one has a time that is greater than or equal to the supplied time. That means that the supplied time is sandwiched between these two keys. So we know that those are our left and right keys. So we can set key left equal to keys with an index of i and key right uh, to keys with an index of i plus one. And at that point, since we found our two keys, we can just break out of the loop. Okay, now the color that we return is going to be a blend between the left key color and the right key color with the strength of each key's color, of course, depending on how close the time value is to that key's time. So let's create a float here called blend time. And I'm going to set this equal to mathf.inverselerp from key left dot time to key right dot time, uh, passing in the supplied time value. So blend time will be zero if time is equal to the left key time, and it will go all the way up to one if time is equal to the right key time. So now that we've got that, 
we can simply return color.lerp from key left dot color to key right dot color using our blend time. All right, so to test this out, we're going to need the ability to add keys in our gradient editor. So let me save this and head over to the gradient editor script. And in the onGUI method, I want to detect when the user left clicks in the window. So I'm just going to create event, GUI event is equal to event.current. And then down at the bottom here, I'll say if GUI event.type is equal to event type dot mouse down. And I'll make sure this is a left mouse press by saying GUI event dot button is equal to zero. Then, first of all, we want to pick a color for our key. So uh, for the moment, I'm just going to make this a random color by saying color, random color is equal to a new color. And I'll just pass in random dot value for the red, green, and blue components. Then we'll want to figure out the time value for our new key based on where the user presses on the window. So let's create float key time is equal to mathf.inverselerp between the start of the gradient preview rectangle, so preview rectangle dot x, and the end of that rectangle, which is gradient preview rect dot x max. And then we'll pass in the x coordinate of the mouse with GUI event dot mouse position dot x. So if the mouse is at the left edge of the preview rectangle, our key time will be zero, going up to one if it's at the right edge. All right, so we can now just say gradient dot add key, passing in our random color and our key time. We would of course like to be able to see these keys in the editor. So let me create a constant float key width. I'll set that to 10 and a constant float key height, which I'll set to maybe double that. Then over here, I'm going to loop through all of the keys in the gradient by saying for int i equals zero, i less than gradient dot num keys. And then I can get custom gradient dot color key, call that key is equal to gradient dot get key with an index of i. Now I want to define a rectangle for the current key that I'm drawing. So I'll call this the key rect, set this equal to a new rectangle. Now its x position is going to be gradient preview rectangle dot x plus gradient preview rectangle dot width multiplied by key dot time. So you can imagine if the key time is zero, then uh, the position of this key will be at the start of the preview rectangle. And if the time is one, then it will be at the end of the preview rectangle. All right, so that makes sense. I also want to subtract from this uh, half of the key width, just so that the key is centered uh, at that point. Then for the Y position, I want this to be just a little bit below the bottom of the gradient preview. So I'll say gradient preview rect dot Y max plus border size. All right, then for the width and height, I'll just pass in my key width and my key height. I'll then just say editor GUI dot draw rectangle we want to draw the key rectangle, and I want to draw it with a color of key.color. Okay, let's save that and see if this is all working. So I'll wait for this to compile, and then I'll open this up. And if we click anywhere on the window, we should be adding in a key, but uh, currently it's not updating immediately here. And that's just because we aren't forcing it to repaint the window whenever we click. So after I've added a key here, I'm just going to say repaint, which is a method in the editor window class. So with that change, I'll save, go back to Unity, once again wait for this to compile, and let me go into my other gradient here, and I should be able to click in and see this add 
keys immediately. So that looks very nice. Of course, currently we can't do anything like actually change the color of a key or move a key's position once we've added it, but that is all stuff for the next episode. So I hope you'll join me next episode to do all of that fun stuff. And uh, until then, cheers.